Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Wednesday sharing of Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews, working now remotely from his house in Phoenix, Arizona. So welcome, welcome, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a, a good, peaceful, joyful day in this season. And <clears throat> a particular warm welcome to anyone who's brand new to this particular webinar. Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing energy in the body. And in Jin Shin Jitsu, we do that by placing our hands left and right of the spine, front and back, in fact, on what we call safety energy locks. There are 26 on the left. Yep, that's the left. And 26 on the right. So the Wednesday version of um, Harmonize to Energize is where I invite people from around the globe, practitioners, instructors, teachers, um, who have inspiring stories they want to share about their Jin Shin Jitsu experience. So <clears throat> without further ado, gosh, I did all that in a minute. Well, maybe I should slow down, <laughs> stop drinking the coffee, not that I am. Anyway, um, without further ado, today's mystery presenter is it's Liz. Yeah. Hi, Liz. Welcome, welcome, Liz. And um, for those of you that have um, previously watched Harmonize to Energize on a Wednesday, you may or may not remember Liz. But Liz is a wonderful um, Jin Shin Jitsu lady from Virginia. And I'm going to let her talk because I'll probably mess all the details up. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, th thank you, Terry, and welcome, everyone. It's just so wonderful to be here, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Um, I'm going to talk to everybody today about not what I do with Jin Shin Jitsu, but how I had a very special cat that did Jin Shin Jitsu on me. So it's a little bit of reversing the tables, so to speak. And I have a little bit of a story that I would like to share about Tommy, um, late, late Tommy. He, he's no longer with me, sadly. Um, and I had him for three years, but what a large presence he was in my life and, and for, for that period of time. Um, before I tell you how I met Tommy, um, I'd like to thank um, Terry for the opportunity and also Del St. Anna. Uh, Y'all may or may not have heard of her. Um, we both live on the Eastern shore of Maryland and I came to find out about Jin Shin Jitsu through her and I'm very grateful for that and for the opportunity to, to share with y'all today. Um, I mostly work with animals. Um, I have found over the years that I have just a much more, um, a greater comfort level with them. And I'll also donate my time for friends and family that may be suffering from a project or help transition um, from this world to, to the next. Um, so without any further ado, as Terry said, um, I have just a, a little, a little, um, quote that I'd like to share with y'all from Winnie the Pooh, A.A. A. Milne, and it's talking in the presence um, about Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, how, how lucky they were to have each other. Um, and the quote says, how lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. And that that's how I feel about Tommy, even though it was said that he's no longer with us. He, he was with me probably for the hardest uh, three years of my life. Um, and with that, um, I'm going to have Terry put up the first slide of when I first met Tommy. Um, he's in a cage there at the animal shelter, and he'd been in there for six months. He was a surrender, and I was there looking for a cat, a replacement for a very dear friend of mine 
who had just lost her male orange tabby. And I had been through, they had it, the shelter is huge. Um, and there was probably five or six houses full of cats. And I had been through all of the houses, the, the kitty cat houses, and I had come to the last house and I thought, how lucky I am to get through all these houses. I couldn't find an orange cat that, that was suitable for my friend. And I thought, shoo, I've escaped, escaped without finding a cat that I want to adopt. How lucky am I? I have just one more room to go through and I'll be out of here and escape without adopting another animal. Um, he was the second to the last cage. Um, and I don't know if, if any of y'all have ever had animals communicate with you. Um, it happens to me on a very rare occasion. Um, and I walked up to Tommy's cage and he looked at me and, and I heard, get me out of here. And, and I thought, what in the world? You know, cat, cats don't talk, what, what am I hearing? And he looked at me again and made eye, eye contact and said, please get me out of here. And so I started having this conversation with him, which I know sounds probably a little crazy. Um, but I was like, listen, I just lost my cat too. And my friend lost her cat. And, you know, I'm sorry that you're in here for six months. And I just, I can't adopt another cat right now. And so <laughs> ran out of the cat house. Um, and a good friend of mine was managing the shelter, Baywater Shelter, and she was all about getting getting the, the pets adopted out. And and she um, calls me by my last name, Watson, and she said, Watson, what would you think? I said, well, I really love, love that cat, Tommy, but I just can't adopt another cat right now. And she said, she was very good at what she did. She said, why don't you take him home for an overnight? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I just, I can't take them home for an overnight. Thank you for letting me look through the, through the houses and, and um, I'm, I'll be on my way home. Well, I get home and my friend says, why don't you get the cat? I saw the picture of him. Why don't you get the cat and bring him home for an overnight? And I said, well, I guess I could. So it was around Christmas time. And so I went back down there. I said, Really, I don't want to take him for an overnight, but, you know, I'll go back with you and look at him. And, and she looked at him and she said, I think you should take him for an overnight. So I took him home and he sort of um, stayed in the back room, um, didn't integrate too well because I have several big dogs. And I called my friend and I said, look, it just really isn't working out. And I just don't think it's a good fit. And she said, give him time to settle in um, and then call me back. Well, I did just that. He started settling in and then I got a phone call from her that said, hey, Watson, either bring our cat back or come adopt him. So I went and adopted him and brought him back home. And it ends up that, to make a long story short, my, my parents, I had to move to their home about maybe two, two and a half years ago, and they were both transitioning. And Tommy came with me, and every single night he laid on my heart chakra, and I feel like he knew. You know, he knew I was going through great heartache, and he just was very, very present. And any time that I tried to do Jin Shin Jitsu flows on him, I've, I've taken several classes from Adele, and any time I tried to do flows on him, he just, he would not have it. And Terry, if you could go to the next, let's see, to the next, um, he just was not having it. And every night he would put his paws in mine and he would put, put his paws on my 17s and 18s between the two of us, we would, we would hold hands and, and each of us would hold it, the other one's 17s and 18s. Um, so it just was very, very touching for me. And he was 
so very present in my life and he got very very sick about maybe four months ago which was almost a year to the day that my father had passed and I had to have a talk with him because he really was just hanging in there and we um, were doing all kinds of vet care and I could just tell that he was only here for me and I had a talk with him and told him I said it's okay you know you've helped me out so much and we're going to transition tomorrow because I just can't can't have you sticking around um, just to comfort me because he, he had become like my sole family member at this time so I'd lost my mother and my father and then I thought oh gosh I can't lose my final you know family member um, but we did have a talk and I told him it was okay for him to go and the next day we transitioned on um, but I'd like to share with y'all um, a picture of how he really blossomed once he came from the humane uh, society to my house and he came down here to Virginia with me, he turned into just a beautiful cat. And um, we really had kind of like this ESP communication thing going on where um, even if I thought about him, I could be laying on the sofa at night and watching TV and I would think, well, gosh, I wonder where Tommy is. And he would just show up as if he heard me and jump up on my heart chakra and and lay there. And what was extra special is that I have um, some stomach issues, especially the gallbladder and liver. And he always knew whenever I was having a, a bad evening or a bad day with my gallbladder, he would get up on my stomach and he would take his two paws and y'all, those of you that have cats probably know how they make biscuits they they need. Um, and he would get to work with a very serious look on his face, very intent, and he would um, knead on my gallbladder and then my liver or my stomach. And, you know, even if I had like a sore shoulder or a sore leg, he always somehow seemed to know it and he would come and work on those areas. Um, so it just was a just a very remarkable period of time for me. It's very emotionally hard and challenging, but he really, really helped me through that period of time. Um, and there's one other cat. My parents have this, the cat here at their house in Virginia, where I still am, and her name is Precious. And she, she is just, um, well, there's, there's a picture of her. Um, she is just a source to contend with. Um, <laughs> we have never gotten along. And it's very, very rare that I don't get along with an animal. They're usually attracted to me. Um, can you still hear me, Terry? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so we've never really gotten along, um, but poor Precious, she lost my mother. She lost my father. She lost the caretakers of um, both my mother and father that she had gotten really attached to. Can you hear me, Terry? Yep. So I think my battery's running low. Um, oh. So hopefully I won't lose you. Yeah. Um, do you want to plug so in? She, she got very attacked. Well, folks, it looks as though we've lost Liz for a bit there. Uh, I guess her battery faded. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> hopefully she will join us pretty soon. Um, I'll just make a quick connection. Sorry about that. Um, it does happen from time to time. So um, I'm just going to text her.
So, like I said earlier, some of you may have um, seen Liz before when she came on um, <clears throat> and she was talking about her um, her dog on that occasion. You know, animals are highly intuitive. That's certainly been my um, experience over the years and months. And in fact, a cat that I once co-cared for, if you if you want to put it that way, always knew where to, um, always, sorry, I'm getting a message here. Always knew where to place his paws. And, you know, I think it's a combination of things. I think essentially, ah, here comes Liz. Here you come. Or at least it says you're coming. <laughs> Ah, there you are, I think. Yeah, as I was going to say, it's a combination of things, really. I mean, they're very tactile animals. They're very observant animals. And they may have even opened their pineal glands so that they can see energies. But anyway, Liz is back. So let's bring Liz back into the equation. Um, welcome back, Liz. Well, this is what... <laughs> Thank you. This is what happens when you get too long-winded, I think, when I start <laughs> talking about something that, that inspires me. Um, pre, pre, and thank you, everybody, for your patience. Um, I'm living way out in the country, and it's very remote, so it, the computer service is a little dodgy. But it helps if you plug in your laptop, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, Don't worry. Um, press, so good. Poor Precious, poor Precious had gotten attached to my parents' caregivers. Along comes Tommy, and Precious was never socialized um, very well. I, I don't think. She just was used to being the only cat in the house, and Tommy spent the two and a half years that he was here um, calming her down, and whenever he would get near her, she would scream bloody murder and you know, several times I would go running downstairs thinking they were having a cat fight. And Tommy would, he was so calming, he would just be looking at her and touching her. And I think over that period of time, he really helped her. Uh, he also used to put his third eye on my third eye and um, brushes, you know, sort of brushes forehead. Um, but all this to say that of recent at night, I have started doing the main central vertical. Um, and when I get in bed at night, I think, gosh, I wonder what Pre where Precious is, what she's doing. I haven't seen her all day. Now she starts appearing and she is now laying on my heart chakra um, and starting to do the same as Tommy. Although I have to say she is a, a very different cat um, in her own way. And I don't have the connection with her that I had with Tommy, but she is really trying. And I feel a bit of a presence of Tommy because it's like out of the blue, she's started laying on my heart chakra. Um, and I have to add, she, she is rather um, plump and weighs about 20 pounds. So hmm. Tommy was on the thin side and weigh, weighed about 10 pounds so it's quite an adjustment for myself but this this picture is when when i'm just getting into bed and just starting on the main central vertical and um she's just hanging out soaking up the jin shin jitsu mm. so that is my my story about animals and i'm just really not sure where i'd be without the connections that that uh i've had with the animals and all that they've done to help me along in, in my life. And, um, you know, I think that I'm saving a pet or saving an animal, but in actuality, I think they rescue me. And I think it was meant to be that somehow he knew that a turbulent three years was coming up for me. And he just said, get me out of here because he knew he was going to help me. So thank you very much, Terry. Oh, well, thank you, Liz. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a beautiful story, and you know, as I was beginning to say earlier, the sensitivity of animals 
and often uh, we find it with cats, but dogs too, is it, really a, a wonderful gift, isn't it? Um, and I think they are wonderful companions to us and they do sense how we are feeling. They, they tap into our heart, you know, <clears throat> and they know where we're feeling or how we're feeling and they can respond. Um, and I was looking in the eyes of, of both the cats there, Tommy and Precious, and yeah, they, they've both been, it would appear to me, you know, through difficult times, yet yeah, they wanted to serve and they came out to serve. Um, and you, you can hear what your animals say to you, or you can pick up intentions, I believe. Uh, I'm sure many of you would relate to that, those of you that have, have got animals. They become like your children, don't they? And um, when we have children, we build up an intuitive connection, I believe. I personally have always made the connection with other people's children. <laughs> However, it can be done and other people's uh, animals. And so that's a very um, heartwarming story, Liz. Um, did you tell, Liz, did you mention that, you know, your father was a vet and you're actually managing a, a veterinary business. Did you mention that? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I, I was very, very blessed that my father was a veterinarian and he worked up to the very end um, when he was 90. So he had a practice for 70 years and my entire life I was always dragging home a sick or a hurt animal or frog I found laying out in the woods or a bird and you know my entire life he always patched up whatever I brought home and was very patient with me and I often uh, often said that had my father not been a veterinarian I would never have had all the experiences that I've had over the years and been able to to have so many animals but he passed um, last September and I've been currently managing his um, vet practice. And um, so it's been really nice. I've been able to be around animals and, and, uh, and it's just been, been very, in that sense, very soothing and calming and, and nice to, nice to be able to spend that time. Um, one thing I didn't add is that I've found um, that every animal has a different energy. Like, like every every type of animal a dog's energy is different than a cat's and a cat's is different than a horse's um or a horse and i find that horses and cats for me share a almost a more intuitive energy than than a dog although i've, I've mostly had dogs my entire life yeah i'm just curious liz um have you actually had a an animal jinshin course at the uh, the veterinarian studio there? Has Adele ever come up? She she has not, and I've <clears throat> excuse me been thinking in the back of my mind that that might be um, something that possibly we could put together um, because she is just fabulous, and and I took a course from her um, at a sanctuary and outside of Indianapolis, I think it was, um, far, someplace further west. I'm used to the East, east Coast, um, but I think it was out, outside of um, Indianapolis. And that's when I first met her. And of course, when COVID hit, took numerous classes online. And, and that pretty much is what has helped me navigate uh, COVID is connections with the animals and other people that also work with animals I, I find them so much easier to work with because if they don't want a certain flow they'll present to you what they want and so to me it, it's so much easier I'll, I'll try to do a flow that adele has recommended as a starting flow and like with tommy and precious they just they just won't have it they'll tell you what they want and that's that um yeah. but we have a a study group that meets um, online via Zoom every other Thursday, which has been really helpful. Does anyone bring in their animals? I had one to, to the study group or to the clinic? To the study group. <clears throat> we, 
Um, mostly we talk about projects that we're working on with certain animals. Many of the people volunteer at shelters and um, humane societies and, and they'll have special cases and we get together and, and discuss them and suggest what might help if there's a particularly hard case. And, you know, it's all about trying to help the animals be more adoptable, you know, ones that are living in fear and have, have had a, you know, been through a, a rough period of time in their lives. Yeah. So, yeah, it's possibility maybe um, in the future, at least to consider the possibility of having um, an animal class, an animal weekend or something. I know um, there's one going to be coming up in Scottsdale um, end of February down my part of the world. Um, and if folks want to know about more animal courses, of course, you would contact Adele. But um, anyway, um, thank you very, very much, Liz, for sharing your stories with Tommy and Precious. And um, at this point, I think we'll just briefly remind everybody that um, <clears throat> This Wednesday presentation is an invitation for anyone who has any inspiring stories, wherever you be around the world, uh, to join us just for this 20 to 30 minutes to share. And I know from what I hear, a lot of people learn a lot and they're inspired a lot. So that's helpful, yeah? Yeah. So uh, don't forget, um, right away to me, if you wish, I still um, can connect on the infinite, <laughs> the infinite, <laughs> on the internet. Oh, well, <laughs> the same difference. <laughs> uh, but it's info at jsjinc.com, um, not .net. And, uh, yeah, drop me a line and let me know. And I'm hoping, I'm sure we could um, see Liz again sometime in the future because, um, as she said, She's managing uh, her father's, uh, her parents' veterinarian studio. So I'm sure there are other stories for the future. And <clears throat> if any of you are wondering whether I'm going to turn up on Christmas Eve, I do intend to, and probably next Wednesday and uh, Friday as well. If I don't, um, you should get a replay. Um, someone asked about what's happened to the most recent replays. Ali has been resting, um, so he hasn't been, up, been able to upload. Yours truly needs to learn how to do it. <laughs> so maybe he'll spend some time learning how to do it so that when Ali's resting, Terry will do it. Anyway, um, thank you all. Have a, a wonderful rest of the day and rest of the week. Hopefully see some of you on Christmas Eve. I know in Germany you tend to... Um, celebrate your at least sharing your presence christmas eve evening i think that's true isn't it um so we might not see some of you from europe but if we do that's wonderful if we don't that's wonderful so take care um be safe be well thank you again liz and uh, it's cheerio from us and take care